Um, I try to coordinate myself, so my legs, my nerves, computer, and so on. And um, uh, uh, so hopefully, Miguel told everything about me. When I started this, uh, to take part in this project, I taught for the University of Economics in Budapest, and now I switched to another job at my age. Uh, they offered me an assistant professor job at Catholic University, not far from Budapest, and it's again a challenge. There's another problem that four days ago I was in Iceland, so I had a day in between Barcelona and Iceland, and uh, uh, I tried to prepare something related to our city. So uh, what I decided to do, it's some practical things, and I would change the title of my presentation, a practical guide uh, to using uh, ICT in language training. So uh, originally, just uh, it's not the place of commercial, but still I have to tell at the beginning that I majored in languages and then did my PhD in international relations. So that's why I teach various content-based subjects in English. And uh, uh, as we were talking about a paperless government, I, I tried to be a paperless teacher. So what I did, I prepared a website for all my subjects I teach. And I try to prepare one for you, uh, for this unit. So as you see that, I am going to show you. You can uh, prepare uh, easily by Google page, page Creator a website for your subject where you put all the requirements, the content of your course, etc. So here are the courses I have, business case studies, EU, security, EU, US security relations, etc. That's what I teach. But, uh, and you put all the requirements there. So I try to prepare one for this course, and hopefully I will find it. And namely, that is this one. Uh, can you see something or you not? So normally I put there, uh, the lecturer name, how many classes you are going to have. And uh, here, as you see, uh, yeah, I have the objective of the presentation to provide a short practical guide to ICT aided or assisted language teaching and learning. Expected outcome. You may feel like doing something like that or simply forget about that. The main issues I am going to approach here uh, technological revolution, you are going to see uh, one of my favorite films on that, that's a very short one. Uh, then methodology and approach, uh, we were talking about this teacher-centered, learner-centered and teacher-facilitated methods. I am going to sh show you some sources and how to use them in your teaching. And finally, uh, I am showing you some content-based tasks and uh, useful websites you can use in your teaching. As for the evaluation, the presentation will be assessed by the audience. Uh, I try to uh, see the various reactions. So excellent if they listen to carefully, showing some enthusiasm, or at least pretend to do so. <laughs> Good, the audience seems to be listening, or at least pretend to do so. Fair, some occasional yawning, browsing the net, checking your emails on the laptops, etc. Poor, frequent yawning, sometimes loud snoring. And finally, fail, I can see your facial expressions. <laughs> And the web, uh, you can get access to this website, so I put there uh, the web address. You can get into uh, the page. Right, uh, let's get back to the beginning. I hope I manage. And the first class, as if it was a first class, that is technological revolution. 
So I found some cartoons I always try to find. Uh, uh, that's uh, by the aid of the internet. Due to recent technological advances, everything taught you about computer is no longer valid. That's absolutely valid, I think. Uh, then the other thing, our school computers are a month old. How can we become competitive in the job market if we are being trained in obsolete equipment like that, a month old? And please, YouTube, help me.
so uh, thank you YouTube and what I thought that what can I say afterwards I try to uh, so uh, let's get back to the second class hopefully I manage uh, yeah okay still escape uh, how can I get back to my website I just tried to uh, probably I have to close this uh, yeah uh, yeah, I think I have to close this. No, 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 no. Google sites. Google sites. Uh, yeah. Log. Uh, sorry, I tried to find that. Yeah, and there was my Google site. So tune there. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. That's great. Thank you very much. I knew that I, you would be a help for me, right? Uh, sorry. Uh, let's see the next one, which is methodology and approach. Uh, very shortly, I don't want to run out of time, so please shoot me down once I uh, overstep that or exceed the time. So uh, I just want to show you some teacher-centered, teacher-facilitated and student-centered approach to using the web. So let's see the first one, the teacher-centered. Then you simply put the materials on the website and students use that at home. Of course, they have home assignments, but uh, you give the instructions what to do exactly. The second one, this teacher facilitated, that uh, the materials are pre-selected, but it's an open-ended uh, kind of teaching and assignments because they have to decide on their own. I will show you in, in a short uh, time. And finally, student-centered, when they use the web, uh, for example, for making presentations, etc., and they have to read, uh, write everything. So uh, originally, I prepared my slides, and you will see because I put it there, uh, that uh, what I thought that you can use for everything, but you yourself have to know you, what you want to achieve. You can't use the web randomly, just, okay, I put a video on. You know the time limit, so for example, I knew that this video was four minutes, and you have to plan, you can plan your classes like that. Okay, let's get down to the next one. Skills and activities. Uh, so, uh, I just put there that what could be a teacher-centered, teacher-facilitated or learner-centered uh, uh, way. And I am not sure, but most probably I put it here. Uh, yeah, for example, students made a presentation. It was an international group at Corvinus University. And uh, there was a French girl, etc. And they prepared a business plan like that. So, they had to put everything there. Uh, I just go through quickly because I really didn't want to. So, executive summary, etc. So, it meant they had to prepare even a cash flow for that. So, they used the net and uh, they prepared these business plans. Uh, I always collect the students' work and presentations uh, because we teach them how to make presentations, of course. Megan, would you know it's okay? I, how can I get back again? Yeah, hopefully like this. And for example, here is the teacher centered. I teach international relations students as I did my PhD there. So I'm writing a book and there's uh, the material. Preparation, thought provoking questions, etc. the material. And finally, they get a task, uh, for example, arguments for and against globalization. Uh, it works like that. Okay. Again. Back. Let's see the next one, the skills and activities. Uh, sorry. Uh, yeah, it's not that, that content-based classes. Oh, come on. Content-based. Yeah. Uh, here I put some sources. Uh, when you want to teach everything, 
uh, together, like reading, writing, speaking, you can use uh, really these BBC words, so words in the news, for example. When I teach media students, they have to follow the latest news as well, talk about that, discuss. The other one, uh, as I am the head of translating and interpreting courses, I found a very, very good website, and I'm going to show you uh, TED. Have you heard anything about that, yeah? Uh, why is it good? Because on the one hand, they can improve their vocab. They can listen to. And that's a kind of translation. You can be a volunteer translator. And that's what I did with my students. Namely, there are some speeches which haven't been translated yet. So you can have a try and send it in. And there is a peer reviewing. So whether they accept it or not, it's up to them. And then you can check your students. They get an international feedback as well. So I am going to show you, probably not the whole, that's one of my favorite about creative teaching. And I will show you the various subtitles there in various languages. So I teach it for uh, students who learn only the language as well, especially in teacher's training, how to be creative in, t in and it's Ken Robinson, probably you heard about him. If not, it's worth watching this video, really, because uh, uh, it's funny, clever, original, whatever I can say about that. And won't go to the end, don't worry. Yeah. How are you? It's been great, hasn't it? It's been, I've been blown away by the whole yeah. thing. Uh, which In fact, one I'm leaving. Is that? This one? <laughs> yeah, I just uh, want one because then I can't use this um, one, so that's the problem. There have been three themes, haven't there, running through the conference, um, which are re relevant to what I want to talk about. One is the extraordinary evidence of human creativity in all of the presentations that we've had and, and in all the people here. Uh, just the, you know, the variety of it and the range of it. Uh, the second is that it's put us in a place where we have no idea what's going to happen uh, in terms of the future. No idea how this may play out. Uh, I have an interest in education. Uh, actually, what I find is everybody has an interest in education. Don't you? I find this very interesting. If you did at a dinner party and you say you work in education, Actually, you're not often at dinner parties, frankly, <laughs> if, uh, <coughs> sure thing. if you work in education, you're not asked, you know, and, uh, and you're never asked back, curiously, that's a thing <laughs> strikes me. Uh, but if you are, and you say to somebody, uh, no, they say, what do you do, and you say, you work in education, you can see the blood run from their face. They think, oh my God, you know, why me? <laughs> <laughs> my one night out all week. Um, but if you ask people about their education, they pin you to the wall. Because it's one of those things that goes deep with people, am I right? Like religion and money uh, and other things. So um, I have a big interest in education, and I think we all do. Uh, we have a huge vested interest in it, partly because it's education that's meant to take us into this future that we can't grasp. If you think of it, children starting school this year will be retiring in 2065, nobody has a clue, despite all the expertise that's been on parade for the past four days, what the world will look like in five years' time. And yet we're meant to be educating them for it. So the unpredictability, I think, is extraordinary. And the third part of this is that we've all agreed, nonetheless, on the really um, extraordinary capacities that children have, their capacities for innovation. I mean, Serena last night was a marvel wasn't she? Just seeing what she could do. And she's exceptional, but I think she's not, um, so to speak, exceptional in the whole of, of childhood. What you have there is a person of extraordinary dedication who found a talent. And my contention is all kids have tremendous talents, and we squander them pretty ruthlessly. 
Um, so I want to talk about education, and I want to talk about creativity. My contention is that creativity now is as important in education as literacy, and we should treat it with the same status. Yes, Thank you. Uh, that's the point I'm going to stop it. And just think about it, it's a very good one, so if that you want it. to see Sorry. that later on, right. I really recommend it. So what so I wanted to show, <laughs> there you can see the interactive well, transcript. No, the, um... Okay, yeah, that's right. Okay, so you can see that it has been translated into 54 languages. If you go along, the Catalan is there. So, if you put in like that, and again... I had a great story recently, <coughs> uh, I love telling it, of a little girl who was uh, in a drawing lesson. She was six, <coughs> and she was at the back drawing, and the, the teacher said, this little girl hardly ever paid attention. And in this drawing lesson, she did. And uh, the teacher was fascinated. She went over to her and she said, what are you drawing? And the girl said, I'm drawing a picture of God. And the teacher said, but nobody knows what God looks like. And the girl said, they will in a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Uh, let's say I am when not a saint, so I have to show you some Hungarian. When my son was four in England, actually he was four everywhere, to be honest. I mean, <laughs> I'm being strict about it, wherever he went, he was four that year. But he was in the Nativity play. Do you remember the story? <coughs> No, it's big, it's a big yeah, story. Yeah, that's right. Mel Gibson did the sequel, you may have seen it. I don't <laughs> Nativity 2. But um, I James know, got the part of right. Joseph. And then can put it here, the Hungarian, anyway. But I don't want to, so it's not so Which we were thrilled about. We consider this to be one of the lead parts. <laughs> uh, we had the place crammed full of agents and T-shirts, you know. James Robinson is Joseph. Uh, we had... He didn't have to speak, but do you know the bit where the three kings come in? <coughs> now they come in bearing I gifts and they, they bring gold, frankincense funny. and mare. This really happened. We're sitting there and they, I think, just went out of sequence. Because <laughs> we talked to the little boy afterwards and said, you know, are you okay with that? And they said, yeah, why was that wrong? They just switched. I think that was it. Anyway, the three boys came in, little four-year-olds with tea towels on their heads, and they put these boxes down. The first boy said, I bring you gold. And the second boy said, I bring you mare. And the third boy said, Frank sent this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so what I wanted to show, uh, it was very useful when teaching translation and I was curious how they managed to translate that into Hungarian, you know, this tricky thing. Frank sent it, I tell you, it was translated to me and yet is hostam. Uh, which means that I brought some uh, hard drinks as well, because it's just a, a, a play, playing with the words, something like that. And I was curious how my students managed to solve that. They managed, they had very good ideas, better than me. So, I think creativity, myself, I think creativity is very important. Uh, yeah, that's okay. Uh, get back again. How to, I'm just, yeah, and where I am, no, I have to lock it, uh, I'm sure I have to close it, everything? not everything, <coughs> just this one, okay, it doesn't work, uh, I have close, to, yeah, Okay, I go back to this one, so that's the best thing. <coughs> Let's see the next one. Uh, PPTI City. So, uh, I always think uh, that ICT is important, but human beings and teachers are more important. So you have to be put yourself in teaching and in ICT as well. Uh, that's why I chose this cartoon. We wanted patients to experience the hu human face of it. Other one? You mean you once had to write letters. It's the generational gap. 
Um, I put here my slides. Uh, that was that. So you can follow the more original ideas. Uh, I tried to get back again. I don't know. Uh, that's backwards. Is there right? Come on, one more. And finally, I will show you a very very short video just to thanks for your attention. I put all the websites I use, not all, but quite a lot of useful them on my uh, PowerPoint presentation. And finally, by chance, browsing the net, in a way I am addicted to the net, I have to tell you. Uh, it's very time consuming, but it can facilitate our work and we can benefit from that quite often. So, the last one, which was a surprise for me, so hopefully it will be a surprise for you as well. Uh, this one and others, let's see. Hello, everybody. Hi, welcome. Thank How you are you? Much. Fine, thank you. A little bit excited, I guess. But so yeah. are we. So who are you? We are the face team acrobatic basketball team. Okay. Where are you from, guys? Around here? here? No, we are from Hung Hungary. Yeah. Hungary. Is Simon famous in Hungary? He is, absolutely. Oh. Absolutely. I guess he's famous everywhere, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> David, not so well known. No, he's not so well known. No. <laughs> that could change after this show, don't we? <laughs> okay, well, guys, best of luck. Thank Hope you very much. Well. Tricks of that, but still. Oof. No problem, sir. That's it. If it started again, probably it would work. Stunt, jump, whatever. I just want to have the end. It's the end already. <laughs> Sorry for that. Never seen it before, would love to see it again. Yeah, I love it.
love uh, seeing something in this show that I couldn't imagine ever being able to do. And you guys have just completely blown us away today, so well done. I thought what you did in between the actual throwing the ball, putting the ball into the net, actually wasn't great. It was a bit clumsy, so I think the act needs working on. Uh, otherwise, it looks a bit amateurish. We will work on it. it OK. It, it won't happen again. Uh, we're going to vote. Uh, David, yes or no? I loved you guys at CS. Alicia? 100% yes. Amanda? Slam dunk yes from me! Four big fat yeses. Dude, that one is for free! So face team. Yeah, and that was all. Hopefully, four big yeses for the ICT. And uh, you can use things like that in teaching as well, and teaching national identity. Are you proud of that? What do you feel about that? What about these kind of shows? You like them not to? What is it good for? So things like that. So uh, let's us let us use our creativity and enjoy our city. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.